Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy here for The Daily Blob, where I shake my brain nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money so I can afford to provide you folks hands-on in-person technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. We have a class coming up on uh, AI and web scraping tomorrow, uh, completely full. We have a class coming up on uh, extending AI capabilities with REST APIs in a couple of weeks. If you're interested in those uh, and more classes, you can take a look at our schedule at Silicon Dojo, silicondojo.com. Do remember, free the end user is not actually free. That's why I shake the brain nip nips every day. If you want to throw some money into the donor box link down below, that would be ever so lovely. And I've got, I've got something surprising to tell you today. I have got something shocking to tell you today. A geek has an opinion. What? Yeah. Did you realize that? Geeks sometimes, every once in a while, have forceful opinions. Uh, story at 11. See y'all later. That's all I got to say. Anyways, I think this is kind of an interesting story just because it has been in the news cycle so much and I kind of sort of think it's a bit of a nothing burger except for the fact that it's in the news cycle and I just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit. Again, talk about the whole concept of geeks having opinions, right? So there's this guy, Lacoon, Jan Lacoon. He is a French AI scientist, been doing AI research for 40 years, and he, he, wait for it, di dis disagrees with Meta's current path. No! Anyways, he got, he got hired by Meta a while ago. He's been working for Met, with Meta for a while, and basically, the long and short of it is he believes that LLMs are a dead end. Um, yes. Yes. And that his concept is that these things called world models, that is what will get us to real intelligence. And all of this is just kind of, I don't know, just the normal kind of conversations, you know, geeks have over beer. But, but because he's a renowned scientist and because he's leaving meta, this has gotten into the news cycle quite a bit. I just want to talk about it a little bit today. So yeah, coming from, um, I think it's called Business Insider, the godfather of Meta's AI thinks the AI boom is a dead end. I do think this is interesting too, like with news and journalists, they always, they always try to go out there and they give people titles. Do you know who this person is? No, no. <laughs> honestly, I don't. <laughs> You know, honestly, if I was at a bar one night and I sat down beside Linus Torvalds, probably wouldn't fucking know he was Linus Torvalds, kind of be said. Like, it's that weird thing in the technology world. Like, I don't know. I think it's because, I think it's because in the past 15, 20 years, especially with a startup, right, with Mark Zuckerberg's and Elon Musk's and all that kind of thing, like, there's this real... There has been brought into our industry this real hero worship horseshit, right? That I don't see most technology professionals actually having, because frankly, for the most part, it doesn't matter. Look, I have been using Linux at this point for about 15 years, and as I say, I got 99 problems in my life. Linus Torvalds ain't on the fucking list ever, right? It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. Once in a while in my news feed, I'll see what he has to say about NVIDIA. That's hilarious to read every once in a while. But other, other than drinking my cup of coffee in the morning and having a giggle over one of his latest email exchanges or what he has to say about NVIDIA, Linus Torvalds really just doesn't matter fucking much to my life, right? It's weird. That's the whole thing. It's like the work the person does can be incredibly significant. But many times the, the product that gets put out for most of us, honestly, who the hell cares? Most of the people that are out there deploy deploying Linux servers, whatever the latest, they, right? They, ju they just integrated Rust, I think, into the kernel level. They either integrated Rust in the kernel level or they're going to integrate Rust in the kernel level. I don't know. I've heard this in the news. <laughs> Doesn't fucking matter when I set up an Nginx server, right? And I think that's one of the interesting things is I think like in the, uh, the tech world, uh, one of the things that we're getting a lot of is these people that are tangentially related to technology 
They're trying to look for things that they understand. Ergo, one of the things that they understand is things like the cult of personality and hero worship and that kind of thing. And so that's why they try to put a lot of these folks basically up on these pedestals. Again, the godfather of Meta's AI. And you're like, yeah, I mean, does that, does, that, does that really matter? Again, the most brilliant, again, again Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg was, was a pretty sharp cookie. He was a pretty sharp cookie about 20 years ago. He got soaked in milk for about, about the past 10. He has not been a sharp cookie for a while now, right? I don't, like Mark Zuckerberg saying something I don't really give a fuck about at this point in time, right? It's the, it's the arguments behind it. And I think that's one of the things to, to be considering here. And especially if you're a new person and you're, you're looking at technology, is try to understand the arguments. Just because a person says it, just because Elon Musk says it, just because this title of a person says it, doesn't really matter. What matters is the fundamental argument that, that goes underneath. Because one of the interesting things too, you gotta remember in the technology world, is this shit changes a lot, right? You know, I talk about stacks and all that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, hee hee, ha ha, you know, ooh, Eli's a boomer. I'm a not boomer. Anyways, right, you know, when I, when I started, I was in electronics. Right, technology in 1995 was much different than technology in 2000, much different than technology in 2010, much different than technology today. Right, the things that I'm doing today, the things that I'm teaching today were literally unimaginable 20 years ago. And one of the important things to understand when I say this, and I'm not, I'm not knocking uh, Lacoon on this, he may be fine, but one of the things is sometimes people can't keep up. I think that's the thing, is sometimes people are really brilliant within their, their little niche of the tech world. And then when the world moves on, <laughs> uh, yeah, they're not so brilliant anymore. And so you gotta be careful with this whole kind of hero worship crap, and title crap, the godfather, ah, eh, fuck off. Anyways, quote, quote, LLMs are great, they're useful, and we should invest in them. A lot of people are going to use them, said Yan LeCun, uh, who's still an AI researcher at Meta for the moment, speaking at an event in Brooklyn Sunday night. Quote, they are not a path to human-level human intelligence. They're just not. Right now, they are sucking the air out of the room anywhere they go, and so there's basically no resources left for anything else. And so for the next revolution, we need to take a step back and figure out what's missing from the current approaches. I do think this is an interesting thing, as one of his arguments here, is basically, and I've talked about this before with this whole AI stack, the AI stack that we currently have is incredibly immature. For some reason, there's this idea that it's a mature stack, and we just need to scale and deploy. Deploy and scale. The reality is, it's an immature stack. We don't really know what we're dealing with at the end of the day. And the curious thing that we're finding is even with the LLMs, with the training, even with the open AIs of the world, even with the metas of the world, uh, that they're actually plateauing. What they're finding is more training does not equal more better LLM. And they are running into some weird issues. But they've gotten so much investment. They've gotten so much investment for this LLM revolution. There is, there is that question of are we over investing into a uh, into a dead end into a technological dead end and then what then what happens to the people who actually have an idea of what the next paradigm should look like but they can't get any funding because everybody's funding the dead end uh, and so for the next revolution, we need to take a step back and figure out what's missing from the current approaches. That's a bracing critique of his employer's strategy. That's not really a bracing critique. That's, I think, what a lot of us are saying at this point in time. In 2025, that is, that is not bracing. I think that's pretty common knowledge. Anyways, it's also not a new one. Lacoon has been a consistent critic of LLMs for years, arguing that real computer intelligence won't come from language models that hoover up text from the internet. He thinks a breakthrough AI will come from, quote, world models, which rely on visual data instead. But the timing gives his remarks extra oomph. Uh, there has been ongoing speculation about Lacoon's uh, future at Meta for many months. Months. That speculation got more intense last spring when Meta started spending billions to buy and employ an all-star roster of AI experts focused on LLMs, essentially a repudi uh, repudiation of Lacoon's uh, Le approach. And last week, news broke that Lacoon was likely to leave Meta and launch his own AI startup. I think the bigger interesting thing here, again, when you're thinking about this, is the whole question of, again, where, where is AI going? Not necessarily the, the world model. So his idea is that LLMs are dead end, world models are the future. 
Maybe. <laughs> I think the interesting thing to think here is are LLMs a dead end? Again, the big question that I've been asking a lot of people, are LLMs providing the solutions that you actually need? Are LLMs actually providing you the resources for you to be able to deploy solutions? Or are they fancy party tricks? I think that's one big thing to ask. And the other thing to look at this with Lacoon leaving a Meta is just that bigger question with Meta of what the hell is Meta doing, right? Meta has actually, uh, what, I talked about that. They fired, they fired 600 of their AI staff uh, relatively recently, and they've had a number of their big name um, employee acquisitions also leave. And one of the big questions I've had for Meta is basically just this idea of what the hell is the plan, right? I've, t I've talked with Meta employees. I've talked with previous Meta employees. I have said to them, look, I understand you're under NDA, you may, I, I, I'm not asking you to tell me what the goal is. Just tell me you know that there is a goal. And uh, they start sputtering. They start sputtering and coughing and the whole nine yards. And the thing that I'd have you think about there, again, this is where we start talking about the AI bubble that becomes very interesting. If LLMs are going to be a dead end, and LLMs do look like they're coming up into the dead endedness. If LLMs are not providing the massive value, return value that were people were expecting, right? And if these companies don't really seem to know how to get to real revenue and real profitability, all right, we talk about with, uh, with uh, OpenAI, $1.4 trillion in CapEx expenses, but for what, for what? Is that, where? where is the return there? I think that's the bigger thing to be looking at here is basically it's the whole idea of that we we really are like lost in a bubble right that these that these major corporations the, these these behemoths that are vacuuming up the wealth of entire civilizations literally don't know where they're going with it i think it's a more curious thing uh, to take away from this um, uh, for years, Lacoon uh, was one of the standard bearers in AI, which is why Zuckerberg hired him in 2013. Now, all of the momentum in AI has moved away from his point of view and toward LLMs. So the other thing to think about this with Lacoon, if he was hired by Meta, Facebook in 2013, he's also then been with Meta for 12 years. Oh my God. <laughs> Geek has been with the company for 12 years and wants to go create his own startup. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Um, anyways, uh, AI's moved, uh, particularly after the OpenAI debuted uh, ChatGPT three years ago, which kicked off a massive investment in the LLM infrastructure. The fact that this science isn't settled and that new conventional wisdom around new tech could form uh, quite quickly certainly uh, ought to give you pause. If the smartest people in AI can't agree on what smart means, it's going to be a very uh, hard to forecast how any of this shakes out. So I think that's kind of like the bigger thing with this, right? Lacoon, so Lacoon has been doing technology for 40 years. He believes Meta is going down the wrong road. Uh, who the fuck cares, right? Geek got an opinion. Again, Lacoon has worked for Meta Facebook for 12 years. He wants to go create his own startup company. Again, who the fuck cares? <laughs> like that's just fucking nothing. Burger. Both of those things are the nothing burger. I think the, the curious thing here is just taking a look at it and asking yourself, again, that whole question of, are, are LLMs, is this technology stack taking you to a place that's actually valuable? I think that's a big thing to think about. The other thing, if you're a decision maker in your company, are you, are you not, are you holding off on investment in certain things to focus on AI? Like this is a big problem that I see with a lot of these companies, right? This, this hyper focus on AI, not focus on productivity, not even focus on automation, not even focus on automation, focus on AI. I think a bigger question that comes out of this is, is, is your company properly allocating for technology research? So even if you're a pretty normal company, if you're just an office company or whatever, your employees do research, right? Your tech professionals, they go out and they try to figure things out. And so one of the questions that should be asked is, are you focusing too much, as I've been arguing a lot, on AI when the real value proposition, you know, might be somewhere else? I think these are the kinds of things to kind of think about here and not really worry about what the fuck a godfather does. Again, like, like, like I, I don't know, like, like, 
the, 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 I call them carpet baggers, the fucking carpet baggers in the tech industry, right? The people that don't know what an API call is, the people that couldn't fucking subnet save their goddamn life, right? They need, they need things that they can glom onto. And that's why, that's why we got the, the words ninjas and rock stars, and now we hear godfathers. Because that's what the fuck they understand, right? They are so ignorant to what we actually do, they essentially have to make up shit to talk about. And I think that that's one of the things they need to be careful about, especially for the young people that are watching. And, uh, and think more about, like, again, the actual technology and the stacks and the allocations of resources uh, and that type of thing. Um, again, the, 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 big, the big quest, the big thing that I would take away from this is, is that basic question of, are LLMs getting you to where you want to go? Whether you're trying to get to super intelligence, whether you're just trying to ship more widgets in a day or make more money off the widgets that get shipped, is it, is it really the LLM that you want or are you actually looking for something else? So anyways, there you go. There are my thoughts. There are my thoughts on Yan Lacoon. Yeah. So what do you think about this? What do you think about the godfather of AI, of Meta's AI leaving Meta after 12 years? What do you think about LLMs being, uh, being basically a technological dead end? What do you think about trillions of dollars investment into something that is probably a technological dead end? And then the question to ask yourself, remember, because here, everything here is from the Buddhist mentality. The Buddhist mentality, it's not really about them. It's not really about Zuckerberg. It's not really about Lacoon. It's not really about Meta. It's not even really about LLMs. It's about us. And one of the things to ask yourself is when you sit there and you hear that Sam Altman wants to invest $1.4 trillion into a fucking technological dead end. And you think about how fucking hilarious that is. How fucking stupid is Sam Altman to fucking put $1.4 trillion in this fucking technological dead end? How fucking dare he try to destroy our goddamn society for a tech stack that isn't even going to do what he thinks it's going to do, right? Yeah, but then ask, and then ask yourself this. What, what are you over-investing in? What tech stack are you currently over-investing in, right? And letting other things go by the wayside, when in reality, the thing that you're putting a lot of investment in probably isn't going to actually be that valuable. Are you, are you one of these companies? Are you one of these companies that is dumping a tremendous amount of money simply into AI? <laughs> like, is your metric use more AI, and then ask yourself, are you any, Sam, are you any smart, smarter than Sam Altman? Anyways, so what do you think about this? Put your thoughts, put your thoughts below, down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik and put a strong American comment down there. Do you remember, uh, uh, what a, ba ba ba. Do you remember, do you remember? This would be a good time for a jump cut. Hey, hey, you know we should do that jump cut thing? Yeah, that'd be good. We don't do jump cuts? Fuck. Anyways, do remember, do remember, what I actually care about is Silicon Dojo. SiliconDojo.com, free to end user, hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. We're actually going to have a class on AI and web scraping tomorrow. We have a class coming up on uh, extending AI capabilities with REST APIs in a couple of weeks. If you're interested, take a look at our schedule at SiliconDojo.com. Do remember, free to end user is not free. That's why I shake the brain nip nips every day. If you want to throw some money into the donor box link down below, that would be ever so lovely. And with that, See y'all later.